Thank you. You're a community center. You're one of my favorite people to interview because you're always so happy. Oh, <laughs> <Aww>, thank you. <laughs> it's probably not always like that, but it just feels that way. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not always like that, but <laughs> I tend to be happy doing this because I enjoy it. Well, I am so happy with your new album. I'm I'm never not happy, but I really love it. My mom, who is 76 and lives in Texas, she called me one day and she said, I don't know who this is on KLTY, but I'm going to hold my phone up to it. You tell me who this is. And I said, Mom, that's Mandisa. That's her new song, Good News. And she's like, oh, that's Mandisa. Oh, my gosh. I love her. I love her. And she's like, that's her. My mom is flipping over that song. I mean, it is. It's awesome. That's an honor. Well, thank you. Pleasantly. Had to give the mama a shout out because she's been <laughs> like, she's like, you know, are you playing it? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, uh, I'm so happy that you're on a winter jam and I'm very happy you're with Danny Goki. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure you guys are, right? We keep touring with one another. I told him, like, you keep following me. <laughs> We've been touring straight together for like two years, it seems like. So, yeah, it's my buddy. We have a great time together. He is, he is so talented and he's one of those people who he has a voice where I can, I know it's him. You know, if I yeah. listen just long enough, I can, I can tell him from all the other guys that sing. And even though it, it's not real strong in one way or another, but it's so distinct. I can tell when it's him. Yeah, he is unmistakable for sure. So Out of the Dark is out. So tell us like what is what was important about this album? Did you have a, like a vision behind it when you got ready to do this yeah. one? Yeah. So, um, my album before out of the dark was overcomer and, um, that album was inspired by my friend Keisha who was pregnant when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so those songs I consider overcomer, like this is my fight song album. I really, every song on there was really her. She was the inspiration behind it. And, um, I just, I wanted songs to help her stay in the fight till the final round. And when that final round came sooner than I was expecting, um, she passed away in 2014. And it just sent me into such a deep pit of depression. And that's why it's, it's interesting when you said that I, I'm always happy because I just went silent. Like I went so dark and I never felt more hopeless in my life and I just went MIA and so out of the dark was really my journey from that deep pit that I did not wish on my worst enemy and how God began to bring me out of that place and so I it's really special to me because it's such an honest look at depression and I realize how so many people battle with that yeah. and there's just something about knowing that you're not alone that you you know that things are not always happy and roses, and the way that God so strategically brought me out of that dark place is something that I am so thankful for. And um, I just I, anybody who battles with it, I want them to know that there is hope. And so that's what that album is really all about. And you know, suicide is so on the rise still. I mean, between celebrities and and people that are not. I mean, there yeah. is, and I think there is some kind of secret shame about being depressed and they yeah. think well i'm not sitting around crying all the time but that the worst the worst depression is what you're talking about i've gone there you know it's when you just dig deep and you don't want any human contact you just you know i almost don't yeah. want to get it on anybody you know <laughs> like because Absolutely. i can yeah you're just so like you you can feel that you're you're just you got it but sometimes i think you got to not set up camp there, but you got to stay there for long enough for you to feel your, your pain. And then, then, you know, to come out of that, then it's that much more victorious and joyous, you know? Absolutely. It makes you appreciate the light so much when you spent all that time in the dark. Like it just, it's something you don't take for granted anymore. And it's why we have to talk about it. There's just, there's something so powerful about it being hidden and any time that it's not talked about, it just gives more power to the enemy to keep us there. And so that's why I feel, I just feel it's my responsibility to let people know it doesn't, so many of us face it and you're not the only one. And there's just something powerful about bringing it out of the dark and into the light that people 
they just they have to know you are not the only one that's facing this and we we, that's why we need each other we've got to be able to rely on our brothers and sisters in christ to bring us out and um i'm sure you're pretty happy that it's the holidays right are you a christmas person (laughs) i'm not honestly i i always feel so bad whenever i get asked questions like this because we never growing up i never really had any traditions and we don't do the tree, and everybody always feels so surprised about that. So, honestly, the best Christmas that I ever celebrated was, it was one where I was by myself, and I couldn't really afford to travel to California, which is where I'm from. And so I just spent the day, you know, like, reading the story of the brothers of Jesus, and it was just me and him. And, um, you know, it's I think when I realized the importance of the holiday and, you know, whether the dates are accurate or whatever, I think being able to set aside time to celebrate the birth of our Savior, I think it's so important to do. Um, I just, I never really did the whole, you know, big tree, Christmas, lights. Like, I never really did any of that. That's just how I was not raised doing it. But I appreciate it, and I really just try to keep the focus on what is important about this season. But you do obviously like it enough to give us a Christmas song. I so, see. I'm not a big fan of Christmas music. I like the more worship type Christmas music. Yeah. I I'm not a Jingle Bells person. Like, but <laughs> but like you know, as soon as I hear the sleigh bells, I kind of cringe. Um, but <laughs> when you're in radio and I mean you hear so much Christmas stuff, there's only so many sleigh bells you can hear, you know, and right. you yeah. start kind of losing it. But like you're a beautiful the beautiful sun song. Oh my goodness. Oh, hit it out of the park. I love, I mean, that's, that's my stuff right there. Oh, awesome. that really yeah, is. I just, I, you know, I had released a Christmas album before, but I just did that song as part of, they did a Motown gospel um, compilation that Danny Goki and I are on, even though we're not on Motown gospel, it's our, we're both under the Capitol right. label. And so um, that, that, song it really is it is worship and because I know the power of worship and that was something that God really used in my life to bring me out of that dark place it just meant more to me and I think the next album that I'm working on and writing for now I I think it's going to be a worship album because I know there's so much power in proclaiming these things in music uh, proclaiming who God is out of our mouths so that seems to be the direction that I'm feeling led in a little bit more these days. So thank you for saying that. Well, if my vote counts, I will I will tell you that's something that I would die to hear from you because one of my favorite songs of yours still that I play for my personal sake is God speaking. When you get oh, yeah. when you get in that zone of just I mean, I want just a piano and you or something like that. I mean, you can do it a cappella too. I'm all right with that. <laughs> but I mean, but that piano and you with God speaking in that song was so beautiful. But that, you know, and, and I say stuff to people about it and they're like, I don't know that song. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to find it because it's, it yeah. is, it's, it, I think you have, I think you have so many gifts. I think you have a gift of bringing joy to people because every interview whether in person or on the phone I, you always put me in a good mood but that oh my gosh that but i love that side of you too i i think you. you did a worship album it would it would be just a, an incredible thing and i'm excited um, i see you're on the jesus freak cruise next year yeah you know i they did that the first Jesus free cruise earlier this year. And so, you know, Toby's my boy and I'm not, <laughs> I usually am doing a lot of tours with him. So being able to be on a cruise, you know, with Toby and with Tate, who we're going to be on Winter Jam with, that's going to be amazing. And just, you know, Kevin, the, they're such staples in our industry. So I'm honored. I cannot wait to be out on that with him. Yeah. Second to you is like Michael Tate on an interview. Like he, he, I told him the other day, I said, you have the energy of like 10,000 toddlers. <laughs> like, he really does. Oh yeah. my. Between, and then if you get him and Duncan in the same room, then yeah. it's exponentially worse. But, um, yeah. so uh, imagine what Winter Jam is going to be like. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot wait. I'm, I'm going to see you actually in, um, uh, February in Michigan, but, um, a lot of our, well, our station is based out of the Atlanta area, so they'll be seeing you in March, but they'll hear you, oh. they're hearing the interview both, 
both places, but I will be there in February when you go to Eastern Michigan, which is where my two daughters go to college. So uh, it, it's doubly, it, it's doubly sweet for me. And I just got to tell you, I, when I saw your name on that lineup, I was like, yes. Um, and then, I mean, Danny, I, I'm dying to see him yeah. and you. And then having newsboys all together like that and Holland. And yeah. I mean, it's just uh, manic drive. You just like look down the list and it, there is no bad names anywhere. Like they, yeah. every single one has got song after song. It's going to be one big jam party. That's for sure. I agree. It's such a great lineup. I was thrilled when I saw everybody that's going to be on Winter Dance this year. It's going to be an incredible tour. Well, you bless my life and you have blessed my mom's life uh, in a little bitty town in Texas. She is in love with you. And sh when she found out that was your song, she flipped out more. And I just, that song really is just, uh, she, she tried to tell me the name of the song and was like trying to say some of the lyrics. And I was like, are you yeah. sure you were listening to a Christian station? What, what, what are you talking? <laughs> because she wasn't getting the, the microphone, the megaphone part. She was saying something else. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then she's like, see what I mean? The microphone, the megaphone. I was like, that's not how you explained it, but okay. But, oh, she was, she's a big fan. So um, I am I am a humongous fan of you always. And thank you so much for taking time. I know you guys have millions of interviews to do. So um, I just appreciate you so much and love you. And I can't wait to see you in February. And I hope you have a very happy holiday season, whichever way you celebrate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're such a joy. You're so encouraging. I appreciate it. Well, I am. I will see you in February. And thank you for that awesome. Christmas song. I'm. I'm happy. I, I love when I can find me some music like that because that's exactly what I have to do for the Christmas spirit. Is I have to find songs like that. Yeah. You know, to to get me yeah. in that state of just thinking about his birth, like nothing else, like, and anything yeah. else is is in. It, on, not con or what do you call it inconsequential however i can't get that word out but i i, I you know what i mean uh, yeah. <laughs> but i love you and i can't wait to see you in february thanks Jenna. i'll see you soon